your pillow. That's a good pillow. Are you comfortable? Hmm? He tied the tongue, you can put it away. That pillow, I don't know. You comfortable? Hmm? Hmm? Hey everyone, it's me again. I am here with a solar update, so I am very happy to do this video. I've been getting a lot of questions since I got it installed, but like I told everyone, I wanted to play it safe. I wanted to wait till I had at least three consecutive bills to make sure when I give this video, it's accurate information and I knew what I was talking about. I didn't want to just give out this, do this video, sorry, and only have one bill or not even have a bill and then and then guess on whether it's worth it or not, uh, what the return on investment would be, etc. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Corey. My wife's name is Raquel. I'm originally from New England. I was living out in Chicago for six, seven years and my goal was to retire when I was 40 and move to the Philippines so luckily for me I'm married to a Filipina <laughs> so that definitely makes it a lot easier and she knows the environment even better than I do she was married with me over in the States but either way we came up with a, a long term it was over a five-year plan if you're new to the channel to move here so for me getting solar was one of the highest things on my list because as far as retiring early I'm all about efficiency and budgeting and planning things out. I'm very, very thorough and organized. And right away, uh, when you look at your, your standard bills, the first thing you're gonna, gonna go over, of course, is your income. You're gonna look at what your rent or mortgage factor is. You're going to look at food costs and you're gonna look at electricity costs. Now, as far as the vehicle goes, if you own it outright, that doesn't count. So I'm not gonna get into a budgeting video. We can do that later on. But right away, I knew if I was building a house, we wouldn't have a mortgage. But unfortunately, if anyone doesn't know, or sorry for anyone that does know, electricity costs in the Philippines is higher than anywhere else in Southeast Asia. So right away, when I was going over the cost of living over here to come up with an accurate budget, I knew I was leaning towards solar right away. I mean, I was all about solar and going green in the States. And if it made sense in Chicago or in Maine with the weather between those places, it's definitely going to make sense here. Now, there's definitely a lot of good factors about having solar over here, and there's also some negative. So I'm gonna get into those, I'm very transparent. I'll tell you guys the problems that I've had and how it's affecting me and also affecting the actual ROI or return on investment. Okay, so before I get into the actual cost, which I know is definitely a high priority, everyone wants to know what did it cost, is it worth it, and just wants a kind of a, a yes or no answer, there is a lot more to it than that. And when I say that, I'm very thorough and efficient, and I know I've said that, but my house runs a lot more efficiently than a lot of other houses and homes do. So to give you guys example, all of my exterior lighting is run off of individual solar panels. So when I say that, I'm not just saying um, I have one or two. I mean, we're gonna come over to my driveway over here. The driveway itself is not very pretty, but you're gonna have a solar light up here anyone that pulls in the driveway that turns on it's a motion detector light obviously you've seen plenty of those but it runs off of a solar panel this is my ring camera my ring camera has its own solar panel right over there now i have five other ring cameras on the property or going around the house all have their own individual solar panels my washer my dryer my refrigerator both the air cons everything's inverter so as far as efficiency goes, I try to spend less than most people would and I try to budget and plan things out. So just keep those things in mind. If you haven't watched my pool video, my pool is 100% solar powered. And when I say that, I'm not referring to just uh, like a heater in the sun. If you wanna watch the video, you can, but my pump lights, everything is off of solar. So it doesn't plug into the house whatsoever. So as far as efficiency goes, I'm trying to do it the best that I can. So if my cost monthly is lower, then that's giving you guys an understanding why, and I just wanna be transparent. So I'm not saying, here's my monthly electric bill and you're saying you know that's really cheap because i've heard some crazy numbers but they're running air conditioning all the time uh they're not inverter you know etc they have a lot of lights on and things like that so i mean all those things add up i've made sure to spend a little extra on the products that are going to consume the least amount of electricity but yet last the longest amount of time because again 
I'm about efficiency. I don't want to spend money and have to replace it. And I also don't want to spend money and then have my bills go up every month. That doesn't help me relax and retire. But even going around my whole driveway, the walkway, all of that has lighting. All of that is individual solar power. So same thing going around the whole house, around the perimeter, around the pool, the exterior, around the yard, all of those lights have their own individual solar panels. So at night, nothing is really on other than my refrigerator kicking on every so often, um, one light bulb that we leave on downstairs, and then we have one air con. Okay, not to ramble on about efficiency. Um, but even my bedroom so we run an air con at night but the thing is on eco mode it's a one horsepower all right inverter air con and our walls because they're insulated our ceiling is insulated and we're not using a metal roof it stays cold in there and we're running it on the second lowest setting so when they put that thing in they told me i was going to need a two and a half or larger or get two of these and i laughed and said negative the typical house that you're installing these in they don't have an insulated roof they're not they're using a metal roof which absorbs all the heat they're also not using the thicker wall so you even our floor is insulated so all these things we factored in so we could do it right when we designed the house so it was running efficiently so i'm not just spending money on aircon constantly and it's just going outside right doesn't make any sense to me i designed this house okay so when i did this we sat here with stakes looked at the sun made sure it was at the right angle so my roof is angled how you would want it to be for solar so when the solar company showed up they said this is perfect and i said great you know which obviously i'm not a solar expert by any means but knowing how high the electricity cost was over here when i was drawing the house it only made sense to do the roof in the layout that would make perfect sense to keep costs down we have a five kilowatt system we have a little over five thousand watts worth of solar panels up there we actually have a six kilowatt inverter inside the house but we have we ordered the five kilowatt system so that's what we got for solar panels uh, they upgraded us to the six kilowatt inverter so if i wanted to add two more solar panels for example then i would be up to six thousand but i'm never making i'm never using anywhere near that for power so as of right now it's not something i'm going to do quite yet Okay, so over here you do have what they call net metering. So net metering is during the day, if you're building up a, an excessive amount of power or you're not using the power that you have, you're then returning it to the power station or you're sending it to the other households. Either way, you're sending it to the line. They're tracking that and then at the end of the month they would be paying you for your overage. Most countries have that. It's a little bit more complicated to get it over here. Um, it's They're telling me it's in between uh, 10 and 12 month process to get approved for it and there's a decent fee involved so i'm going to apply for the paperwork now that we have three consecutive bills so it, we know that it's going to make sense for us uh, i'll definitely give you guys the total cost on it okay as far as pros and cons go i'm going to tell you guys the negative right now uh the power in the philippines fluctuates and when i say that it's a, a very smooth crazy roller coaster so to give you an example first two months power was smooth solar solar ran perfectly every day then the third month it was out uh, either every other day or every two or three days. So we wrote it down and we didn't have solar nine days out of that month, which is obviously, you know, 30%. It's, it's a significant amount. Uh, that being said, we called the solar company right away so they could come out and test it and figure out what was going on the, the second day that it happened. And it had nothing to do with our solar unit. So it had to do with the power coming into the house. And we're pulling off of a box that powers the whole street and it's not much of a box. And then the neighbor, which was right over there, has a business they were welding on a new roof so i walked over there noticed that figured out the days that they were welding and every time that they were welding it, it, our power was all over the place so the solar would shut down for safety so unfortunately that's something that you want to keep in mind you might want to have that tested it's not something that i thought of prior um, and it's not going to be a problem long term because i got to say they told us when they'd be done repairing the roof and we haven't had a problem 
even one day since then. So the, the solar has been perfect for the last couple weeks uh, since they've been done the roof. But unfortunately, that's something to factor in where if you have a business nearby or people that are, I'm not quite sure what to say. I don't want to say like, if you're going to have a lot of irregularities in your power, that's something that you're going to want to check on. Because for us, like I said, it hurt us for about 30% of that month. We still saved a significant amount where it was still worth having solar. But the fact is that we are losing 30% for the next five years. That's a big number, right? So you got to keep that in mind. So get to the number one thing that everyone cares about the most was what is the return on investment? What is the total cost and is it worth it? Okay, now like I said, there's a lot of different things to factor in, which is why I had to touch base on those. But to me, absolutely was worth it. It makes 100% sense. So for us, having an on-grid system, we're still paying for electricity at night until the net metering kicks in. But either way, our first bill was uh, in USD a little over $50. It should have been about 100 and was it 160 our second bill was around 60 something dollars usd uh it should have been 160 again and then the worst bill that we had and this is because we had a lot of family over and when i say that my wife had over 20 people uh from manila fly in so we had people using the washer and dryer all the inside lights were on karaoke going to all hours um everyone was you know like i said using the washer and dryer during the day and things like that and we had the outside lights on and everyone was cooking and it was a good time i'm not complaining at all but uh either way we would never normally be using that much power um and for that month my bill came out to was it 87 dollars that would again that would be usd and it should have been about 200 a little over $200 USD. So either way, I'm comfortable saying that I've saved a minimum of $100 every month. So even if I were saving $50 to $75 a month, it would still have a good return on investment where I'd be getting my money back in, in seven plus years. Now paying $5,700, $5,800 for the system total, I mean, I didn't actually pay six grand. So if you factor that in at $100 a month, that's $1,200 a year, you do the math, and if I'm saving $100 a month, this unit pay for itself within five years. And I'm actually saving more than $100, but either way, for me, it's absolutely worth it. And I just want to remind everyone, that's before net metering kicks in. So when net metering kicks in, and then the overage that I'm building during the day, they're then paying me back for at night. Because right now, my electric bill is basically early, early morning, and at night we have the aircon on we have one it's on eco mode and a handful of lights and of course the refrigerator is going to kick on every so often but that's what our electric bill is really based on because we're not getting net metering yet so when we have the net metering and then they're paying us for the overage this is a win-win but either way if we just kept going where we're at you invest six thousand dollars and you're saving a hundred dollars a month that's a no-brainer if you have the money so to me, this is absolutely worth it. So we're going to actually be adding on to the system. I don't want to get into that quite yet on this video because it's going to be a little complicated to most people. Um, and I want the electrician will be back next week and then we'll have a final decision on what we're going to be doing there. But either way, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the system. It's saving us a good amount of money every month. And other than the one month where my neighbor was using, sorry, when my neighbor was welding constantly, uh, it's been very reliable. It's really easy to use. It tells me what I use for solar and saved yesterday. It tells me today. It tells me this month. It tells me last month. So I can always look at it and I know what's going on. And again, this is how the weather is here most of the time. Now, of course, it's the Philippines. Does it rain? Well, absolutely. It usually rains for 20 or 30 minutes and then it stops. During the rainy season, it's going to rain more. But even when it's raining and cloudy, I'm still building way more power than I'm using. I mean, honestly, this thing is kicked on and using more power than I need at 6 a.m. And it's still running at the most I've gotten out of it was like 6.19 p.m. I was probably getting, you know, almost nothing for wattage. But either way, 
the amount of power that I'm getting off of it is way more than I'm ever using. So during the day, I mean, I'll look at the thing and even if we're using closer to 2000 watts and it's making four, I'm in a really good spot. So we're really, really happy with the unit. Another, another wonderful thing about living here because like I said, when I lived in Maine uh, and I looked at going solar because I was all about going green and being efficient, it just didn't make any sense. It really didn't between the snow, the angle, the angle of the roof and all the trees and everything else. It just wasn't an option, but for here, this is working perfectly and I'm really, really happy with it.